Oh, good, good morning, morning everyone. everyone. Good morning. My, my name's Alex, if you don't know me, I'm pastor here. Uh, it's, it's good, good to, to welcome, welcome you to Trinity, Trinity whether, whether you're in the building here or joining us online. Uh, it's, uh, you're very welcome to worship today. Uh, today we're marking the ascension of Jesus when he left his disciples after he'd risen from the dead and uh, went away. Uh, so we're, we're thinking about that story and uh, we're going to begin with a couple of verses from Psalm 24 and then a verse from Revelation. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And Jesus says, listen, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you and you with me. So may we open the doors of our hearts and lives to God to come in today, for the Holy Spirit to come as we worship together. And I'm going to hand over to Chris and the band who are going to lead us in a couple of songs. Good, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to begin by introducing you to two new members of the music group. Um, this is Rachel, and this is Aza. Um, they're very welcome. Please let that be a sign that everybody's welcome in the music group, and if you're feeling the urge, feeling called, then please do come and have a word um, with, with me at some point. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We start by singing, Lord... I lift your name on high. And now, when the music fades.
Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you are enthroned above the praises of all creation. Lord, you are glorified and splendid, and we worship you. Lord, thank you for that reminder that you are the heart you are at the heart of all things and our lives and all that we do and all that we are at the end is all about you so lord we pray that as we worship you today that you will be the center that our worship and all that we think about and all that we pray and do today bring us back to your heart we pray that we might know your heart of compassion for us, that we might know your welcome and your, your gracious uh, welcome to us as we open the door of our hearts to you and you come in and eat with us and stay with us and are gracious and loving and it's so good to be with you. We pray that we'll get in touch again and, and know again your, the heart, your heart of compassion for this world that we live in, and for every person and living being on the, world, on the earth. Lord, help us to, to get a, a sense of, of your love for all that you have made, for all Jesus that you gave your life for, and that we might bring our lives into that flow of your spirit that is drawing all things back to you calling everyone home. So Lord, we pray that you'll fill us with your spirit this morning, draw us closer to you. Come into our lives, we pray, and lead us 
in our worship and in our living in the days to come. Lord, we, we open the door of our lives to you. We open our hearts to you. We bring ourselves to you. And we give you thanks. Amen. And let's join our prayers together with the prayer Jesus taught us to say, the, the Lord's Prayer. The words are on the screen if you need them. As we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So the children and young people are going to go to young church now. So God bless you and all you do in your groups, and we look forward to seeing you later. Those of us staying in church, we're going to hear a Bible reading from the beginning of the book of Acts. And um, Alan's going to read to us that story of the Ascension. Thank you. Morning. Um, as Alex said, it's from Acts chapter 1, and it's the first 14 verses. Jesus taken up into heaven. In my former book, Theopolis, I write about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky where he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they were upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. Amen. <clears throat> So we're going to be thinking in a few minutes um, that, that 
there are many different ways to serve Jesus, uh, many different ways in which we can serve him in the church. And uh, we're going to pause in a way for a moment now and think about um, our friend Matt Graham, who died recently and who served the church in his own particular way. We're doing this in the service, partly because it fits with the theme, but also um, because Matt's family have decided not to have a funeral. So we're going to just, we want to pay a little bit of tribute to Matt and remember him and give thanks to God for him. But Keith's going to um, share some thoughts and memories about Matt uh, for us now. Thanks, Alex. So, as you will have heard, our member and friend, Matt Graham, sadly passed away on the 5th of May, following some very difficult years for him health-wise. As he became unable to get to church, the ministry team and several others visited him, visited him at his home, in his care home, and in hospital. So we offer our condolences to his family and friends, particularly his grandson, Jake, who we thought the world of. And I've been asked to give a summary of Matt's church life. We're not actually sure when Matt came from Percy Main Methodist Church to here or what was West Avenue Methodist Church, but it was certainly before 1995. Matt's church life was dedicated to the functional practical work of the church and it became very much the main part of his life and he had various jobs here. Prior to the redevelopment, he was our caretaker. He then voluntarily served as a vestry steward, supporting and welcoming our ministers and visiting preachers. He served as a door steward, doing the count of attendances and of the collections received. And perhaps ironically, he was always, always in the vestibule stewarding for funerals. Throughout all this time, it was hard to enter the premises before Matt, as a keyholder, was in, and he was also usually last out, though switching the lights off to encourage departures. Matt enjoyed music and was particularly supportive of concerts held here by our choir, the big band, organists, plus the beadwind band and choirs. He also organised a couple of concerts to support a local singer who he became a good friend and who came to rely on him. He also enjoyed his treats and Rosemary's kindly provided some of his favourite tray bake for coffee out the back afterwards. It's as well I've only been asked to cover Matt's church life as work-wise, we only know that he managed a co-op store, worked for a tailor, and latterly worked as a driver for a garage. I can't link that together, but Matt did. So Matt, rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Let's pray together. Loving God, thank you uh, for the fact that you do call us to many different ways uh, to honour you and serve you in our lives and we thank you for Matt and for all that he gave to this church and to the people here, uh, the ways in which he served very quietly and very practically. Uh, we thank you for his friendship to people here and in other places I'm sure. Uh, Lord we thank you for all that you did in him and through him and we pray uh, now that uh, as you uh, receive him into your presence and uh, as his earthly pilgrimage is over. Lord, we pray for his family and for those who've cared for him over the recent years particularly, uh, that you'll be with them and close to them as they miss him. So Lord, we thank you for him and we thank you for what you have done through him. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we return to the reading and that story of Jesus' ascension, we're going to sing the song, There is a Hope That Burns Within My Heart.
I think you have to feel sorry for Jesus' disciples. Um, they've been through so much in the past three years. Uh, they, they've been pushed to the edge. They've been faced with 5,000 people on the hillside and said, Lord, do, do some, something about these hungry people. And he says, you give them something to eat. They've, um, they've been sent out on mission with nothing in their bags, no purse, no spare shirt, nothing, just to go and to see what happens. It's been tough for them. And then into the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the crowd's going mad, the crowd waving their banners, waving palm branches. This is it. This is great. This is going to happen. And Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then he's arrested and then crucified. And then what a roller coaster they've been on because then there he is, he's alive again. And surely now, Lord, this is it, isn't it? Surely now, Lord, isn't this the time when you are going to restore the kingdom to Israel? This is when you're going to sort it out. And Jesus says, hmm, actually, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It was hard for them to hear, I think. And maybe it's hard for us to hear that today. We've been through so much over the past three years, haven't we? We've been through so much. It feels like before COVID, BC, was another, it was another existence, wasn't it? It was like another world. And, and we remember things that we did and how it was and so on, but we've changed and the world has changed and life is different and so much. And the trauma that we have been through is, I think we're not really coming to terms with it or telling the stories yet because it was too traumatic. We did really well. But we've been through so much, and, and maybe now you're looking at the state of the world, or maybe, Lord, can you just sort it out? You're looking at Ukraine, praying for Ukraine, or Sudan, or the people who've been hit by the cyclone in Bangladesh, or whatever is on your heart, and you're saying, Lord, sort it out. Is this, surely, this is, isn't this the time? Isn't, can you not come and sort it all out? Just answer my prayers. And whether you're feeling tired, uh, that you've got no more to give, that you can't do it alone, or whether you're feeling excited at the prospect of changing the world, or if you're somewhere in between those two, here is Jesus' plan. And it involves you and the Holy Spirit and the salvation of the world. It's a very simple plan, but it's, well, maybe hard to hear. It's a plan for a community of people being transformed and empowered through the Holy Spirit of God within them. And then that community spreading across the world, wherever they go, acting as the body of Christ, doing the things Jesus did, being his witnesses. You will, be, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It's not easy to hear and the disciples didn't find it easy to put it into practice, to be quite honest. We uh, read of great things happening in Jerusalem in those early chapters of Acts as the Holy Spirit came on the church and I don't want to steal next week's thunder too much but that's what's going to happen and the um, Holy Spirit comes and sends the church out onto the streets and it's incredible and thousands and thousands of people join the church and it's an incredible time but you get to sort of chapter 6, chapter 7, the church is still in Jerusalem. Jesus said Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And they kind of got stuck in the middle there. It's a bit like a donut. Just in case you don't know what a donut looks like. 
things like that. So you've got the hole in the middle, okay, which is Jerusalem, and uh, then you've got Judea and Samaria, and you get sugar everywhere, around the edge. Actually, it's a bit stale, so it's not sugary. Um, Judea and Samaria around the edge, and then the ends, everything else beyond. And the church got stuck in the middle. And I wonder what the donut might have represented, and I wonder what it might represent to you, that kind of soft, comforting, sugary, nice bit where you feel okay and everything's all right, yeah? Yeah. What might it be? It might be comfort. It might be that sense of, I'm all right. This is all right. Or maybe it's a sense of, you know, I've been through so much, and, and is, isn't this enough? Isn't this good enough? Um, maybe the donut could be the thing that stops you going beyond that immediate environment is sense of feeling inadequate, that sense of, I can't do this on my own. I don't have the right gifts. I don't have the... The ability, I haven't got the ideas, I don't just don't know what to do. It might be comparison to other people to think, well, I just couldn't do that. What she's doing, I couldn't do that. Uh, it might just be simple fear. Fear of the unknown, fear that, or whatever, you might, fear that you might fail, fear that you might look stupid. Fear that someone will laugh at you or be unkind when you tell them about Jesus. And we get stuck in that sugary, comforting, fatty, delicious place. Jesus calls us onwards and outwards to go beyond the donut. Okay? But he doesn't call us to go on our own. And this is the genius of Jesus' plan. He doesn't say, go on, off you go. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit is given to us uh, to be with us, to bring the presence of Jesus into our lives, to equip us, to give us the gifts that we need, to give us all that we need to, to follow Jesus' calling, to serve him, in the way that he is calling us to serve. The Holy Spirit is given to us to form the character of Jesus in us, not to make you like someone else, but to make you the best you you can be. And if you look at the list of names in um, that passage that Alan read for us in verse 13, we have Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. Start off nicely, don't we, Peter? We know about Peter. Peter did some great preaching in the book of Acts. We've got his sermons written out for us. What a, what a great leader he suddenly became when the Holy Spirit came on him, transformed him, uh, and did this amazing upfront stuff in front of thousands of people. Uh, John was sometimes with him in these stories. Uh, James, well, James got beheaded in chapter 12. Um, Andrew, we know he doesn't feature again. None of the others feature in the story again. Okay? There is a Philip later on, but it's a different Philip. Okay? So only one of them is recorded as preaching to a crowd, but, but all of them eventually... Uh, went beyond their donut. They took, it took a nudge. They were stuck in Jerusalem. It took some persecution to get them out into Judea and Samaria. And then it took another move of the Holy Spirit in the, in the uh, church in Antioch, modern Antakya, which was the um, regional capital where, where Paul and Barnabas went out on mission from that church. Uh, it took some nudges of the Holy Spirit to move them out. But eventually they went out beyond their donut from Jerusalem through Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So that by Acts 17 verse 6, people are far away in Ephesus in western Turkey are complaining that these people have turned the world upside down. We don't know how they did it. 
Maybe they didn't pr all preach. Maybe they didn't all heal. Maybe they didn't all do the same things. But they, between them and with the other people who joined them, turned the world upside down as they witnessed to Jesus and gave him the glory in all they did and said. And the church grew, and the good news of Jesus spread, and people received that new life. So what about you, and what about me, wherever you are on that line between being tired, justifiably, or being excited about changing the world, and you just want to get out there? What's God calling you to do? Because this, this commission of Jesus, this call of Jesus, comes to the church, comes to the community of followers. That's you and me. What is he calling you to do? The Methodist Covenant Service that, um, that we take part in every year here says these words in the preamble. It says, Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, so others are difficult. Some bring honor, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some... We may please Christ and please ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. We each have something that we can do, uh, something that will align with, with our concerns, with, with the things that that get your heart beating a bit faster with your gifts, with um, your, your kind of natural inclinations, but also God does call us beyond where we're at already. You, you, there's no standing still, really, in following Jesus. It is a walk. It is one step after another. And, but in those things Jesus calls us to do, he equips us and gives us all we need, and he gives us the support of a community around us as well. Uh, so, you know, we heard earlier on, Keith told us about Matt, who uh, I, I hardly ever got much of a conversation out of, out of him. Uh, and he certainly, I can't imagine him preaching, for example, but he served Christ in his own practical way. He found something he could do. And maybe God is calling you to just witness to Christ in, in what way? In what way? Uh, maybe he's calling you to something new, something you'd never imagine yourself doing. Uh, but in doing it, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you become more truly the person that God wants you to be, more truly the, yourself. So get beyond your donut, friends. That's the challenge of today's reading. Go beyond the donut. Three steps I want to suggest. One is Ask the Holy Spirit to come. And uh, I've said this a few times recently. Why not make this a daily prayer? So in the morning, you put on your clothes, put on the Holy Spirit as well. Just say, Holy Spirit, come and be in me and with me today. Make that your daily habit and through the day as well. Um, there was an evangelist called D.L. Moody um, quite a long time ago. And he was always preaching about uh, receiving the Holy Spirit. And uh, someone said to him, Mr. Moody, why do you keep talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit? Isn't, you know, once enough? And he said, well, the thing is, I leak. So keep praying for the Holy Spirit to come. And, and ask Jesus, again, when you say you put on your clothes, you put on the Holy Spirit, and then ask Jesus, what should we do today? What should we do today? And see what, what uh, comes out of that. Because you're not being asked to do anything on your own. It's Jesus' work in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then be honest in prayer as well about the barriers, your donut, the things that, where you get stuck, and you know you get stuck with that thing, whatever it might be. Uh, and if it helps to talk to me or someone else in the ministry team, uh, please do, or, or just find a Christian friend you can trust and, and talk about it, and, and that may, may help you. Uh, it may help you just to hear those words, as was in the song earlier, courage from Jesus. I remember a time I'd been on sabbatical for three months. It's about, it about eight years ago, just to give you fair warning. Um, 
about eight years ago, I was on sabbatical, and I had a lovely time, three months, basically, in the woods. I'd learned some bushcraft, and I just had a lovely time with the trees, and I really didn't want to go back to church and back to the, the, my work in the community center there in Brighton. It was, it was, I wasn't enjoying it, and it, it wasn't, you know, and I didn't want to go back. So the first day I went back, uh, I, I had an errand to do. I probably didn't have to do it, but I was putting it off, putting off going back. And I cycled up a side road I didn't normally cycle up, and on the road surface, someone had spray-painted the words, be brave. And I thought, God's trying to tell me something here. Be brave. And sometimes that's maybe all we need. You're feeling a bit apprehensive. You think, should I say something to that person uh, about Jesus or not? And you feel a bit apprehensive. Just be brave. Maybe all you need is to hear Jesus say, courage, I'm with you. I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'm with you. And just pray for the Holy Spirit. Give me the words to say. Jesus said, don't worry about what to say. The Holy Spirit will give you the words you need to say in, in that time. So ask the Holy Spirit to come. Ask Jesus, what should we do today? And, and pray about those barriers, those, those donuts, the place you get stuck. Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Are you going to sort the world out while, uh, you know, is this it? Is this it? No, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So may the Holy Spirit fall on us. May the Holy Spirit fall on us, direct us, and equip us in glorifying Jesus in all that we do, in Gosforth, in Newcastle, and all Tyneside, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. Let's pray together. Loving God, thank you that in your compassion for the world, uh, that you call us to be part of uh, your ministry. You call us to be witnesses to your love, and that what we have received so freely from you the light that we have seen, the, the love that we have received, the new life that, that you are giving us. Lord, we thank you that you call us to share that with others. Uh, Lord, we don't always want to. We don't always feel that we can. But we pray, Lord, for you to fill us with your spirit now and every day. Lead us in following that call of Jesus that through each one of us and through us as a church here at Trinity, that your glory will be known, that your light will shine, that your love will make a difference in the lives of many people. Lord, help us, we pray, to step out in faith with you, to know your new life as we, as we share it, that as we as we shine your light, as we share your love, as we lead people in, in knowing you better, that we will know you better, that we will grow in our faith, that we will receive more of, the, of your life and the filling of your spirit. So Lord, lead us in that way of Jesus, we pray, day by day. And we pray for your church all around the world, uh, particularly where, where there are your people where there are disciples of Jesus gathering and witnessing and serving you in places where it is risky and difficult to do so, where your church is really amongst some of the poorest people or amongst some of the most difficult uh, places on earth. We pray particularly for, for them, for our brothers and sisters there, that you'll equip them and empower them through your spirit, that you'll be glorified and your kingdom grow in those places. Lord, we pray that your, uh, that witness to you will spread across the world. Lord, we, we pray for uh, all those situations that we pray for time and time again, the, the places and the people who are on our hearts in, in the big world situations like Ukraine and other places of conflict. And we pray, Lord, that you will work there and bring peace. 
Lord, we help us to keep praying and be persistent in prayer, knowing that you hear us and that you are at work. Lastly, Lord, we, we pray for all those who are on our hearts today, those we love, who, who we uh, are praying for. And we pray that you'll be with them and uh, bless them, bring them all that they need today in, in whatever situation they're in. So, Lord, we pray that in our lives, in your church and in all the world, you will be glorified and your kingdom come. In Jesus' name, amen. So we'll take up our offertory now, please. Or I'll receive it, rather. Let's pray. Loving God, in thanks, thankfulness for all your generosity to us, we bring these gifts and all the other ways in which we give of ourselves and of our resources, and we pray that through them your kingdom will come in all the world. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to gather around the table in a few minutes for communion. But uh, before then, we're going to sing the hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Please be seated. Before we come um, to the table, we're going to receive Sheila Webster into membership. So, Sheila, if you could join me up here, please. So, it's been a great pleasure to have Sheila worshipping with us last year or so. Yeah, so um, that's been brilliant. So, um, 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only head of the church, and in accordance with our church meeting, we now receive Sheila Webster by transfer from Barclay Viewforth Church of Scotland in Edinburgh uh, into membership of this congregation at Trinity. So Sheila, let uh, us now hear the affirmation that trusting in the grace of God, you intend to live as a faithful member of this fellowship. Do you confess anew your faith and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, maker of heaven and earth, redeemer of the world, giver of life? And do you promise, trusting in God's grace, to be faithful in public and private worship, to live in the fellowship of the church, and to share in its witness? And to all of you, if you agree with this, could you say, we do? In welcoming Sheila as a fellow member in the life of this church, do you promise your friendship in the Lord and with God's help to give her your support in prayer and service so that she, with us, may continue to grow in the knowledge and love of God and witness to Jesus Christ our Lord? We do. So let's pray. God of grace, you call us to be your servant people and gather us into the body of Christ. We thank you for bringing us together in this congregation. Confirm us all in the power of your covenant to live in your spirit, to love each other, and to share the mind of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Sheila, in the name of Christ, welcome to Trinity. Thank you. Thank you. And while we're on the subject, if uh, you've been coming to Trinity for a little while and you think this is your spiritual home and you'd like to commit formally to being a member here, have a word and we'd love to uh, do that. We'd love to welcome you in in that way. This is the Lord's table. The Lord Jesus himself invites us to share in this feast and to remember him in bread and in wine. Uh, we, we hold an open table at Trinity, so if you're visiting today or if you're here for the first time or uh, whatever, you are very welcome to come and share in the bread and the wine uh, if you would like to, if that feels like a proper thing for you to do. Um, the bread is gluten-free and the wine is non-alcoholic. If that helps you, be included. Um, if you're sat downstairs, um, you'll be called up um, to come to the front and receive the bread and the wine, which uh, you can consume at the front or take back to your seat as you wish. Um, if you're downstairs and you can't get up to the front, uh, when everyone's been served, we'll come to you, but you may need to just catch, catch my eye so I know to come to you. Okay, if you're in the gallery, uh, the elements will be brought to you in your seats. So welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because as we gather at this table, we remember that Jesus was born of Mary, that he lived our common life on earth, that he suffered and died for us, and on the third day he rose again, and that he is always present with us through the Holy Spirit as we await his return in glory. In his presence and in the presence of all the people of God, past, present, and to come, we gathered here and scattered throughout the world we celebrate the Supper of the Lord. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. And Paul wrote these words to the church in Corinth, saying, I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, when he'd given thanks, he broke it, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, the Lord Jesus took the cup, gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And Paul adds, 
For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So as Jesus prayed, let us pray. We give thanks to you, O God, that from the earth you cause the grain to come for the making of bread, and that you cause the vine to yield fruit. We give thanks for everyone who helps to bring us your gifts as you give us each day our daily bread. We praise you for Christ, the bread of life and true vine, whose body was broken for us and whose blood was poured out for us. At this, your table of grace, we proclaim his death and resurrection in a broken world. We proclaim the sacrifice of Christ in a world of selfishness and greed. We proclaim the goodness of God in a world of hunger and injustice. We proclaim life in its fullness through Christ in a world of pollution and destruction. We look in hope to the banquet of the kingdom of heaven, where the Lord scatters the proud in their conceit, casts down the mighty from their thrones, lifts up the lowly, and fills the hungry with good things. So by your bread and be a participation in the body of Christ, and the cup of blessing which we bless may be a participation in the blood of Christ. As we share the sufferings of Christ, so give us grace to know the power of his resurrection, that we may be made one and evermore abide in him to your praise and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So draw near with faith.
Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears that have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the eyes that have seen your great love shine with the light of hope. May the tongues that have sung your praise always speak the truth. May the feet that have walked in this house always walk in the light. May the bodies that have tasted your living body be restored to new life. Glorify your name in our lives, in your church, and in all the world, and may your kingdom come. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. So our last hymn together picks up that theme of Jesus coming. Behold he comes, riding on the cloud, of Elijah. As the band comes up, I'll just invite you to come behind for coffee and uh, chocolate cake in memory of Matt. So, uh, so behind me in the Derwent Hall. Those of you at home, sorry, you have to get your own cake. So until that glorious day, may we receive power from the Holy Spirit that we might be Jesus' witnesses in Gosforth, in Newcastle, and all Tyneside, and to the ends of the earth. And as we go, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with us and remain with us always. Amen. And let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.